I hope you picked z to the eighth, because z to the eighth times z gives z to the ninth. And you wanted to use the largest perfect square that you could divide into z to the ninth, so you could factor it into z to the eighth times z. Now once you break it into the squares and what's left, all you have to do is to evaluate the square root. The square root of 49 is 7. The square root of x to the 6th is going to be x cubed, because x cubed times x cubed is x to the 6th. The square root of y to the 6th is y cubed. The square root of z to the 8th is z to the 4th times the square root of 2yz. Again, you can get these answers by dividing your index into the exponents for the literal part. 2 into 6 is 3, 2 into 6 is 3, 2 into 8 is 4. So here is the reduced answer. Let me do one more before I give you some exercises. Let's simplify the fourth root of 162 x to the fifth y to the 17th. Well, in order to do that, I need to look at my perfect force. So you need to pull out your table perfect force. And you need to factor this into what is a fourth times what's left. Be very careful that you get your index in. Now is 162 a fourth? Well notice it goes 16, 81, 256 and so forth. So 162 is not a fourth. Well, will any of these numbers go into 162? Well, let's check it out. Let's start with 16. Let's do 162 divided by 16. And it doesn't come out even. Let's try 81. 162 divided by 81 equals Aha, uh -huh, that works. It came out. So I can write 162 as 81 times 2. Now what about x to the fifth? x to the fifth is not a perfect fourth, but x to the fourth will be. And I can write x to the fifth as x to the fourth times x. y to the 17th is not in this list because it's going to be 4, 8, 12, 16. The next would be 20. So I do not have 17 in the list, a to the 17th, but I would have a to the 16th. So that means that y to the 16th is a perfect power. What would I have over here and what's left would be y. Because y to the 16th times y is y to the 17th. Again, you ask yourself the two questions. Do I have a perfect fourth? Well, do I have 81, a to the fourth, and a to the 16th in my list? Right here is 81, a to the fourth, a to the 16th. So they are all perfect fourths. The next thing you ask yourself, if you multiply the two of them together, do you get 162 x to the fifth y? Well, 81 times 2 is 162. x to the fourth times x is x to the fifth. y to the sixteenth times y is y to the seventeenth. Now, once you get them factored, all you do is simply evaluate the fourth root. The fourth root of 81 is 3. The fourth root of x to the fourth is x. The fourth root of y to the sixteenth is 
y to the fourth. Four goes into four, one. Four goes into sixteen, four. And then I just bring down my what's left, so it'd be times two x y. So my answer is three x y to the fourth times the fourth root of two x y. Now don't forget to put the index in. If you leave the index out, it's understood to be two. In this case, the index should not be two. It should be four. I'm just about ready to give you some exercises. But before I do, think back about the things I've talked about. Do you really know what I mean when I say perfect squares, perfect cubes, perfect force, and so forth? If I were to ask you to make a chart for the perfect fifths, would you be able to do so? Do you know what I mean when I talk about the perfect power in what's left. Do you know how to factor them? If you're not sure about any of these things, be sure to get someone to explain it to you or listen to the tape again. You need to make sure that you understand the concept before you test yourself with the exercises. Now I'm going to give you four problems to play with. The cube root of 54, the square root of 28x to the fifth, the cube root of 16x to the ninth, y to the twenty-fifth, the fourth root of 2x to the tenth, y to the fifth. Carefully copy the four problems. When you are finished, stop the tape, work the exercises, and then restart the tape to compare answers. Here come your answers. The answer to the first one, three times the cube root of two. The second one, four x squared times the square root of seven x. I just see a mistake in that one. Shouldn't be four x squared, what should it be? Two x squared. Because what you do is you break the square root of twenty eight x to the fifth into what is a square, which would be four x to the fourth times what's not, which is seven x. The square root of four is two. The square root of x to the fourth is x squared, so it'd be two x squared times the square root of seven x. So see, you better be careful. If you disagree with these answers, it doesn't necessarily mean the mistake is yours. The third one, my answer is 2x cubed y to the 8th times the cube root of 2y. The fourth one, x squared y times the fourth root of 2x squared y. If you disagree with any of the answers, be sure to check with someone. Let's look at a few problems now that are similar but involve just a little more work. <clears throat> 